word of the Lord as told by the prophet Moses. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his cow, nor his donkey. Neither shall thou desire his automobile or his motorcycle with an unholy desire. When thou lookest upon thy neighbor's clothing with envy, thou sinnest against heaven. Coveting thy neighbor's handsome face is right out. Longing after thy neighbor's epic skills is strictly forbidden. Banish from thy heart all jealous thoughts of thy neighbor's awesome hairdo or killer bod. Verily the Lord thy God commands, thou shalt not jones after anything. Here ends the reading. Ninth Commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. What is this? We are to fear and love God so that we do not try to trick our neighbors out of their inheritance or property or try to get it for ourselves by claiming to have a legal right to it and the like. But instead, be of help and service to them in keeping what is theirs. But wait, there's more. And the Tenth Commandment. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. What is this? We are to fear and love God so that we do not entice, force, or steal away from our neighbors, their spouses, workers, or livestock, but instead urge them to stay and remain loyal to our neighbors. What is coveting then? Coveting is having a sinful desire for anything that does not belong to you. This is a different kind of commandment as it relates to our neighbors. All of our other commandments that relate to our neighbors, thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal, thou shall not commit adultery, so on and so forth, have to do with behavior, stealing, killing, lying, all those kinds of things. And so this commandment, however, has to do with our heart and our desires, controlling our thoughts and our mind. When we are commanded by God, you shall not covet, God is commanding us not only not to steal from someone else, but not to desire to steal from someone else. This is what the Apostle Timothy has to say about coveting. If we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Basically, God is trying to protect you. When we want what we cannot have, we only create misery for ourselves. But rather, if we say thank you for what we have and we help others keep what they have, we create happiness and peace both within ourselves, within our heart and soul, and also peace in our relationships with our neighbors. So God not only wants our behaviors to be good and just and right, 
God also commands that our thoughts and our heart and our motivations be good and just and right and loving. Most often, sin begins with a thought or desire, something we want, something we can't have. And it could be all kinds of things. It doesn't have to be a thing per se, like a piece of candy or someone's iPod or whatever. It can be a desire for popularity. Oh, I wish I had friends like that person had. And so you try to impress people by picking on other people or saying mean things about your teacher or disobeying your parents in order to have friends. But if you are content with what you did have, the friends you do have, or the friends you could have, the friends God is calling you to have, then you wouldn't be tempted to do all those mean things to get friends and be popular in a way that you shouldn't. It's about desires. You should be thinking about your desires, about what you want. You should ask God. God is saying, I want to be in control of your desires. Not only your behaviors, but also your desires. Well, folks, this is our last video for this year. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. I hope you've enjoyed all the videos that we've been doing and uh, the discussions that you've been having with your parents at home. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, please let me know. You can send me an email. It's been great. We'll see you on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. It's about Jesus. It's about